This is the Friday, November 7th, 2014 version of the Market Plus segment. Joining us now is Mark Gold. Mark, welcome back. Nice to be here. We did not get a chance to discuss cotton on the show. Give us your thoughts on that market. Cotton, we've had a big increase in production this year. Carryouts virtually doubling. And we've put cotton prices down into the low 60s. Uh, 60 cents is going to be an important area to continue to hold. Otherwise, we're going to take a look at 55 cent cotton out here. Long term, I'm a little bit friendly down here on the cotton only because I believe the soybeans are going to go back to being king in the south again. And we saw a little increase uh, over the last year or two with cotton trying to make a comeback. But I think the beans are really going to vie for some acres down there with these prices and where the relationships are today. So longer term in cotton, I think we've got a chance to rally the market. It'd be nice to see some demand out there, which we haven't seen. The stronger dollar is going to hurt that. But overall, I think we can, you know, maybe see a little bit of rally. What I think that really means to the American producer is if you are selling cotton down here, buy yourself a call to get you through the summer months in case we do see an upside. But uh, hopefully we can, we can hold this 60 cent mark and see a decent rally. For producers weighing that decision to go soybeans, to go cotton here in this next growing season, what should they be watching for as the time gets closer to pull the trigger? Well, I, I believe guys are just going to look at these price relationships and they'll go to the universities and get some studies on where it's more economical and they'll get some good information out of some of the southern universities on that. I'd be hard pressed to think that it's not going to favor soybeans significantly. So I believe we'll see more bean acres in the south um, at the expense of cotton. We've seen some shifts in, in the south and what they're doing with the land. We've seen a lot of catfish ponds gotten tore up to go back into land. And uh, I think some of these changes are going to continue. Cotton's going to have to find some story on its own uh, in order to compete with those acres. And maybe that'll be higher prices yet between now in the time they make their final decisions. Okay. Now, you've talked repeatedly about soybeans being in this, this incredible market and particularly soybean meal really yeah. driving these bean prices. <laughs> Tell us what you've been seeing in this meal market. Well, the meal market, guys have gotten squeezed. They were expecting to see big production, big crush numbers. As we got into October, November, the harvest has been delayed. And the bigger problem has been the shortage of not only rail cars, but locomotives as well. And we can't get the product to the East Coast for the poultry producers, for the swine producers, and that has sent soybean meal in probably one of the greatest rallies of all times in 30 days. We went from contract low on October 1st to almost a new contract high by October 31st from $300 to $400 a ton. It's unprecedented in a 30-day period. But what looks like it happened, a lot of guys were short the meal, expecting to get the meal in. They didn't get it. They had to pay up for it. And it looks like guys were even double buying some of their meal needs to make sure that they had protection out here. And that's kind of added to this major spike that we've seen. Uh, we got up to, I think it was 407, 408 was the high. We backed off. We got back down to 365, 370 in that range. If we start closing under 365, if you look at the chart, it is, normally we talk about a staircase going up and an elevator shaft coming down. This has been an elevator shaft going up, and maybe it's going to be a staircase going down. But uh, people say that the market's insane. Well, what would be equally as insane is if we went back down as quick as we went up. I don't know that that's possible, but as we start importing meal into the East Coast, which pencils out from not only Brazil, but Argentina as well, as we see alternative, alternative feed uses being used instead of the meal, as we get more crush and more harvest done, can this meal basis fall out of bed on any given day? You bet, and this dollar and a half rally we've seen on the beans could get taken away pretty quickly, particularly if the Brazilian weather stays pretty good. So on this rally, it's giving you an opportunity, particularly for new crop beans, to get some put option spreads on to protect that downside take advantage of it, hope you lose that 50 cents and grain prices go through the roof. That's okay, but if we're looking at $8 or sub-$8 beans come next 
fall, you'll be glad you have those put spreads on. You know, and we saw a situation like this not too long ago in the oats market last yeah. year where yeah. we had the oats available, but yeah. transportation made it impossible and yeah. up it went and then yeah. eventually. And you know, eventually this thing will work itself out. Yeah. First of all, we've got a Republican Senate and a Republican Congress now. Is the pipeline coming in? My guess is it will be. So at some point, there'll be less demand for those cars to move all the oil out of North Dakota, South Dakota. We'll get companies like GE who build the locomotives and other companies, they're gonna be putting these locomotives out as fast as they can. There'll be more rail cars produced and it'll eventually come out. Now, is it solvable between now and March? I believe it probably is. Uh, can the Jan meal still have a little kick to it? Maybe long Jan, short the March maybe, but it's a very dangerous spread and I wouldn't be looking at that unless you're one of the big boys out there. Because if they figure out this problem, that mail basis is gonna collapse. The crush margins went over two bucks. They're gonna collapse. So it's not a game to try to beat. It's a game to watch for an opportunity for you as an American farmer to use as a marketing deal. Right. Take advantage of it while What's it's here. There? Maybe don't try to trade it. Yeah, exactly. All right, now we've got a question from Kyle in Hubbard, Iowa. His, he's mm -hmm. curious. Is hedging or making cash forward sales for December 15 corn the right thing to do now? You've mentioned the ratio favors beans. Yeah. In theory, we could see fewer corn acres. Yeah. How do you play that in the corn market? You know, the way I believe you can play it and play it effectively is looking at what we call a short dated December option in July for the December 15 price. It's a short dated option. You can get something pretty close to the money for 20 cents out there. So, for example, a three, I think it's a 370 put you can get for uh, 20 cents. Now that option is going to expire at the end of June, but that gets you through this time frame now of seeing what the South American crops are going to be. If we've got big South American crops and we're, the dollar is continuing to head higher, we could really hit this market between now and the end of June. That's the greatest risk, and particularly between now and the end of March. So the planning intentions on March 31st, I would think could be a little bullish, but until then, we could see this corn market go down. Those options, you spend 20 cents for it, could, be, could they be worth 50, 70 cents by then? Maybe they could. And that at least gives you a starting point to have something on to get a little more comfortable with it. So that's one suggestion. The December 15 options, in my opinion, are probably too pricey, and they go too far out considering I would expect a reduction in the acres. All right. And if you play the short dated June option for the December, come June, if you want to hedge against a weather scare, you could always roll it into a call. You could roll Ab it into a, a decent option at that point. Absolutely. Save some of that time, time value. value. Exactly. You That's bet. Right. Well, Mark Gold, I want to thank you for taking the time to be with us. Now, always a pleasure to be here, Mike. And thanks to all of you for sending in your questions via Facebook and Twitter. Please continue to do so, and we will get expert analysis right to you. Thanks for watching, and have a great week.